It's the book of Zechariah, chapter 7 and verse 9. Uh -huh. Thus spake the Lord of hosts, saying, execute true judgment. We got to execute true judgment. We can't just be so focused on what Esau has coming, what, what Amalek has coming, what uh, Ammon and Moab has, has coming. Our people got death and destruction coming too if we do not get right. That's right. Our captivity and our um, punishment, our curses is going to perpetuate themselves if we don't correct ourselves. And that's amongst every black, Hispanic, and Native Indian. Right? right? Just because you want to know and they're not doesn't mean they're exempt of true judgment being executed with them. And now, it doesn't mean now you can deal falsely with them because they don't know the name of the Most High, because they ain't rocking fringes or zitzits or gadol. That doesn't mean any of that. When you know better, you have to do better and encourage them to do the same. That's right. Read. And show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. And we need to have a lot more mercy and compassion one toward another. Even amongst those that have doctrinal differences, man. We so quick to, you, uh, hey, you, we Sakari. We believe in the Lunar Sabbath. But if you messing around with that Friday night to Saturday night set every year, I don't know if I can rock with you. Or other little differences. We ain't even gonna get into it. Other little differences, you ready to cut a brother off. You gotta have a lot more mercy and compassion upon him. Not so quick to just call him out their name. Not so quick to just, you know, isolate and separate yourself from them. We need one another. We need one another. And especially if you understand that we are coming out of this Torah, out of this law, we have to have compassion and mercy for, for one another, read. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. It says none of you can have evil, right? Or none of you should imagine any evil. Sister, let us get you a flyer. Stop real quick. Pull over right here. Let's get you a flyer. You can catch the next light. Get her a flyer. We got one for you. Call the number. Call the number on that. Call the number on that flyer right there. Get one of the brothers. Get that dent outside that car right there. We need that. Got you. We got you. We love you, sis. We're gonna take care of you. Get that dent out right there. Right. And that's that mercy, love, and compassion. You know what I'm saying? We because because the resources that we have, come on, man, that's gonna build what we in Sakari uh, 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 emphasize, man, camaraderie, right? Camaraderie and trust and brotherhood and sisterhood. That's what's needed in this place amongst us. These are the things that we lack. This is why the so-called white man can come in and infiltrate and separate us from one another. And as long as we're gonna be separated, our house will continue and forever fall. Read. But they refuse to hearken and pulled away the shoulder. But what did it say? We, for, we refused to argue and we pulled our shoulder away, right? Well, we should be latching and holding each other's shoulders, right? We want to pull away. We want to be separate. We want to be individuals. Jump to eight and, uh, and, and 15. You got that Deuteronomy 15? Hold it. Go ahead. Book of Zechariah chapter eight and verse 15. So again, have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem. And it, says, it says, behold, and yet I have thought these days to do well unto Jerusalem. The Lord always has it in his heart to try to do something well for us. He is waiting. And, 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 and it's just, ooh, his love for Israel, you black, Hispanic, and Native Indians, God's love is just oozing out of us. But well, we got to give him something to love, man. We got to give him something worthy of loving. So that when he showcases love to us, that we don't uh, uh, throw dung in the most high space and make him look shameful and, and make him feel regretful. Make him repent of the blessing and the love that he gives us. Read. So again, have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah, fear you not. These are the things that you should do. Speak you every man the truth to his neighbor. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. And the truth isn't just, hey brother, you a black, you a Hispanic, you a native, hey, you, you, you black, Hispanic, native, Indian, you an Israelite. That ain't just the truth. Hey brother, uh, 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 no Jesus, no. You tell them those things and then you show them what comes with that. You operate and execute accordingly. Showing true judgment, love, mercy, and compassion towards one another. Read. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. And peace in your gates. We, that, that has to be first and foremost in our minds, right? We get this knowledge, we see people speaking against it, and then we so ready to cut. Right? We trying to fulfill our flesh. We want we want to walk around feeling good that we cut somebody. You see what I just did with Esau? I didn't tell him how Esau is just the, the devil at the Bible. I said, this is our blessing to you today. I'm teaching you to do it. He said, I said, take eat him. He said, eat him. 
Edomite, Edomite. He said it with such love and passion, he gonna go into the rest of his people. That's right. They, they are Edomites. Mom, guess what? Dad, we're Edomites. And dad is gonna say, boy, get your ass over here. You know what the people just taught you? God hates Esau, sir. We do the same thing with our people. We try to build them up, but then when they want, they don't want to receive it, we start speaking down on them. We start turning our nose up at our people like Esau turns his nose up at us. Can't do that. Keep reading. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor and love no false oath for all these things that I hate, said the Lord. And guess what? This is what a lot of our people that are non-believers are trying to use against us. That division, that separation. And then trying to find some way to accuse us, right? Then they start using their devilish, false, accusing ways to say that we don't even live according to the ways of, of, of our book that we believe in and that we are here teaching our people. Come on, man, we gotta show a lot more love and compassion. We gotta, we gotta listen, you ain't gotta agree with the doctrine, but especially in amongst of these non-believing people, you gotta actually do the things that we read about in this Bible. That's right. And don't imagine an evil, uh, don't imagine evil in your heart against your, your neighbor. Get that in Deuteronomy 15. Bring it out. Start at verse 7. Go ahead. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 15, verse 7. Bring it out. If there be among you, it says, if there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Poor man among your brethren in any of your gates. Right? We got to look out for the poor. Right? Not just ones that sit Sakari. It might be a brother that, hey, he needs it. We got to lift them up. Go ahead. Thou shalt not harden thine heart, nor shut thine hand from thy poor brother. But thou shalt open thine hand wide unto him. It says, open your hand wide unto this man. And it's just the compassion that you have. Why would you ever want to see one of your brothers, man, a, a fellow Israelite of any tribe, destitute, down, and without? Right? When you got the ability and you have the means to, to, to pick him up. That might be the very thing that he needed, and that and that and that blessing trickle down to someone who you do mess with, and it might come back around full circle. You never know where these things gonna go, man. But we gotta have that within each other. And again, once we start to do it, what happens? We pick up on this trend now. Everybody else wants to do it. We see how this truth of of, of teaching black, Hispanic, and Native Indians and Israelites. You see how that's spreading in the world right now. Everybody talking about that they're Israelite. Everybody talking about they're Jew. Our behavior now has to represent that, and that's what's got to become trendy, and that's what's got to become viral. Read. It shall surely lend him sufficient for his need, and that which he wanted. It says you have to lend to him uh, uh, what is sufficient for his need, being that what he wants. <laughs> what? <laughs> see that? See that? Look at the most high, man. Look at the most high. Full circle. Full circle. What's your nationality, bro? What's your ethnic background? Uh, I'm from Somalia. You from Somalia? Let me see. Let me see. You got this? You got this from, from Jesse? Now, you, now, here's the thing, Jesse. I'm going to tell you something real quick, all right? It's okay. It's okay, all right? I'm going to show you something. Now, I know what I said. I know what I said. <laughs> you're, you're not wrong, Jesse. You're not wrong. This is my fault. But, 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 but it's my fault. It's my fault. Because we, we said black, right? <laughs> Let me ask you a question. You say you're from Somalia, right? Mom and dad Somalia? Yeah. Do you guys identify with the people that was a part of the transatlantic slave trade? I mean, part of my family. Which part? Uh, on my dad's side. I see you kind of smiled a little bit when you said that. On your, what do you mean on your... Inform me. I'm, I'm trying to get an understanding. Uh, my dad's grandma. Right. Was. Her sister. Like, Damn. Okay. Was. Your your dad's grandma's sister. So your dad's great aunt. Great -aunt yeah. Was a so-called Negro. Yeah. That's kind of far back, man. Like, how long? How long have people been? What, what generation of uh, uh, of Somalian are you? In the, in the States? I mean, like, my dad, like, uh, my dad's mom stayed in Somalia, right? Okay. My dad's grandma stayed in Somalia. Okay. Her sister was not. 
was not Somalian or did not stay in Somalia. So your 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 dad's great aunt was put on a ship as a slave and brought over here to the America from Somalia? Yeah, I know. I No, no, I'm not I'm you had said something, I was just I I didn't know. You're saying your dad's great aunt was captured as a slave and put on a ship and brought here to the Americas? I'm not sure, but Jesse, understand this, right? The so-called Somalians, um, they're not a part of, and they understand, you guys know that there's a separation between East Africans and the West Africans that was a part of the transatlantic slave trade, right? You understand that. Um, not to mention, now, let's, let's, let's create a lesson, right? How do you guys feel about that happening to the so-called African Americans here in the Americas? How do you how do you feel about that? I mean, obviously, it's not really like it's not just about the slave trade because they did also colonize on that part of that, right? That included Somalia. I'm 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 waiting for you to finish. You're saying it's not about the transatlantic slave trade, but it's about colonization? I'm not saying it's not about that. I'm saying it's not something you cannot relate to. And maybe we're not part of the slave trade, but we were. Nor any of the things that came with the slave trade. No. Not to mention, not to mention, the place in which was built on the backs of those, a part of the transatlantic slave trade, the Somalians came and joined themselves with the people that did it. Were you born here in America? No. You were born in Somalia? I was born in Kenya. Oh, okay, Kenya. How did the channel, how did the pipeline, how did the highway for your people to come to America to seek a better opportunity and a better life, how was that made? Um, off the back of slaves in America. So it's not as if you guys came over here to help, you guys came over here to benefit off of what happened to those a part of the transatlantic slave trade. You understand? Meaning, if, if if what happened to my ancestors would have never happened, you wouldn't be in America right now. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Well, you're, you're more of a collaborator rather than uh, a victim. As you say, well, we can relate to it because Somali was colonized and then you guys are part of tra uh, the slave trade. So it's like, see, we've all faced oppression. And it's like, one, they're incomparable. Two, you joined up with those that facilitated the transatlantic slave trade. You walking with me? Um, it's like this, it's like this, right? Are you and Jesse friends? Yeah. Okay, so you and Jesse are friends, right? Let's, and what's your name? I'm Taz. My name's Zach. Huh? My name's Zach. Zach, okay. Zach and Jesse, right? Let's say all of us right here, we just whoop Zach's ass, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and then we you know, started this whole little movement. Then, later on down the line, you see Jesse rolling with us. You gonna be cool with Jesse? Why? Because he's collaborated with the people that went against, so the so-called Somalians have collaborated with the so-called white men that have been coming against black, Hispanic, and Native Indians, which is those that, again, facilitated the uh, transatlantic slave trade. You walking with me? So, so, so that's why when we told Jesse about the movement, we said so-called blacks, and he just thought everybody that had the same skin complexion, not understanding that there is a differentiation between, you know, certain ethnic backgrounds, even though people have the same skin complexion. So our movement wouldn't pertain so much to you, right, as it would those again part of the transatlantic slave trade i know what i told jesse and i wasn't specific so we understand we appreciate just the effort but he's got judgment coming too you guys collaborated and sympathizing there's judgment coming and there's a and there's a point in time where these people are going to receive their rightful position which is the on the pinnacle of, above all the rest of the earth and everyone else is going to have to cleave unto us as we spoke about earlier right so we waiting for our nation and trying to build up and raise up our people to be back in our rightful position, unified amongst ourselves, so we can receive the blessings and promises that God has for us. Understand? What was your question? What I'm getting is uh, the Somali collaborating with the 
American or the European, the people who were the oppressors, the people who enslaved a large part of Africa. And so they are also part of the problem. That's, that's the thing. I'm saying that in order for Somalians to be in America, they joined themselves with the people that was doing wrong to my people. I didn't say that. I'm talking to a Somalian, so therefore I address Somalia. I'm listening. We're not talking. We're not. See what this is. What you're doing, right? You're you're using the term the problem as if now anybody a part of the problem, this umbrella term that you're using, now gets condemnation. We're talking about a nation of people versus another nation of people, right? Your nation of people collaborated with the nation of people doing wrong to my people, and therefore I was giving understanding, further understanding to what I told Jesse, that what we're doing doesn't pertain to you as it does to uh, the, the American Negro. Go ahead. Just a brief point, like, for example, there were significant contributions from, let's say, the Igbo or the Yoruba to the slave trade, right? So if a Nigerian that's of Igbo or Yoruba descent comes over here, right, there are people uh, who were taken advantage of to build this, right? So it's not the same as somebody who's Somalian because your people didn't contribute to that. You see what I'm saying? You guys were on the other side of the continent. So that's why you can't compare the same thing. But but people who had nothing to do with it, yes, would be a part of the problem. Just to be clear. Go ahead, Cap. You got any other questions? Yeah. I got you. He said several. Huh? I got you. just said that. He yeah. literally just said that to you. Uh, the fact that we don't contribute or hinder the progress does not make us uh, does not make us any better. Or does not make us give me Isaiah fifteen give me Isaiah fifteen. Uh, thirteen and fifteen. Where we get it first? Or are you there? Isaiah thirteen fifteen. Bring it up. Book of Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 15. It says, everyone that is found... Start at, start at 12, where you got it? Go ahead. It says, verse 12, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than a golden wedge of Ophir. This is, this is during a time where judgment is going to be rendered for the things done to God's chosen people. Okay? So, he's saying, in this time, I'm going to make a man more more. Uh, uh, precious or, or more more valuable than fine gold, right? Because it's not going to be something to where people are even going to accept gold as a form of barter or an exchange, right? It's going to be based off of a man, his skill set, or the blessing that God has for him in terms of people's survival. Read. Therefore, I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place, and the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. The wrath of the Lord and the day of his fierce anger. Read. And it shall be as a chaste roe, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people. In this day, every man is going to have to turn to his own people, right? It's not going to be just individualized thing where a lot of people, not saying you, but a lot of people try to separate, remove themselves from who they are, where they're from, and they just say, well, I'm me. I don't speak for them. That's not who I am, X, Y, Z. In this day, in the day of God's wrath and in his fierce anger, Every man is going to turn and they're going to join themselves into their own people. Read. And flee every one into his own land. Every one that is found shall be thrust through. And in the day of this judgment being executed, everyone that is found, that's there, they're going to be thrust through. Read. 
And everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. And everybody joined unto those responsible, transatlantic slave trade, other various forms of oppression, those that are joined unto them it are the ones that's going to fall by the sword. So when you say, well, we were just sitting there in our, in, in our own land and we were just there. We didn't contribute to the left. We didn't contribute to the right. Yeah, but at some point in time after or throughout history, you found yourself joined unto the people doing wrong unto God's chosen people. And in that respect, you're going to fall by the sword because you've now joined arms with them. You would have no other point or no other reason for being here other than taking advantage of the opportunity they created off of their wrongdoing. Does that make sense? It, it doesn't make sense that you wouldn't be here capitalizing off of wrongdoing. Yeah. Okay, now that I brought it to your attention, now that I brought it to your attention, now what do you do? Now that I brought it to your attention, like you said, you didn't have nothing to do with it, and before me you even had this conversation, it's like, damn, man, I, mean, I probably didn't really think about it. Now that I've told you, now what? Now what do you do? How do you escape being responsible? You just said Jesse would be responsible. So why aren't you? Because he was there for it, right? He, he was there when you got to be honest. And he, he realized that. Okay, 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 so let's, but let's. imagine it was Jesse, right, who was watching. But then, then what's the kid who's doing nothing. What's it, yeah, yeah, if it's his kid, you wouldn't turn around and tell, Je like, bro. not telling his kids that it's kind of wrong, right? To join themselves unto us that whooped your ass? I would not hold it against his kid, no. Because, because one, Right, but I mean, you would you expect Jesse to tell his child and these things to have an understanding that these people are contrary against in opposition to you guys and your friendship and who and, and the and the the the, it, the 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 friendship that you guys have? You're telling me that his son is blatantly now that you told him, like, bro, like, son, you know, or kid, you know what they did, you know what's going on. So, because I, what I was going to ask you was, what's the difference between Jesse being there and not being there? Would it be a difference if Jesse was there or if he was in Neiman Marcus and then you told him afterwards? Would it make a difference then if he then joined unto us? Thank you, because it's all about awareness. Once I make you aware of it, that's where action should be taken. So I'm saying, whether it's Jesse, whether it's his kids or his kids' kids, why would you ever be okay with that? I didn't say that that's the reason. Well, I mean, no, that is the reason. They're joining themselves unto Americans. Place where, you, where you actually stand a chance to live a decent life. What would you choose? We don't have much of a choice. Yeah. How are you gonna tell me you don't have a choice and then you gave me two choices? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's crazy how people talk to you, man. Like, you got a choice. You just are going to choose the one that that benefits you. Absolutely. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No matter the cost, of, no matter what it costs to other people. That's what you're missing. Okay. You wanna know why? What is the cost? <laughs> Great rabbit murder of black, Hispanic, and Native Indian people. Obviously, nobody is for that. Obviously, I am not for that. Obviously, I'm not joining up with people. Whoever your ancestors was that made it, that made the choice to leave Somalia, the poverty, uh, 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 famine-stricken land, right. to come over here, right. they didn't care, and they didn't even raise you to care. So this is why I'm even giving you the benefit of the doubt. Say you're right. Before we had this conversation today, you didn't know. Now I'm telling you, what do you do? You instead of you saying, "All right, listen." Jesse had a lot more integrity than you did. You wanna know why? Because as soon as he turned to Jesse, Jesse said, ain't nothing I can do, you're right. You're trying to convince me why I should be okay with you being over here, joining forces with the people that Ray Robin murdered my people. I'm not joining forces with you. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying you already have. You're not joining, you have joined. How is that? Because you're, are you an American citizen? Yes. Boom. 
You don't get it? Like you like, come on, bro. Zach, you really, you really telling me you can't book those numbers. You're an American citizen. I understand that. Because you made a choice. Either I'm gonna stay where, where I, it's not beneficial for me, and I'm gonna go and join myself and become a citizen of the place that is literally built on horrific oppression. Something you call fucked up. And you still did it anyway. When did you become an American citizen? Just recently. How old are you? Um, 19. Come on. Cognitive individual. Accountable individual. Thank you. So when you said I'm not joining, you're right. You've already joined. Done deal. Cake's been baked. Okay. If that's the case, how was that supposed to make a difference staying in Somalia? Okay. So you're telling me now you only joined so that you can make a difference, right? What's the difference you're making? I'm going to walk with you. You're not going to sit up here and just give me some random stuff and then we're going to leave it there. If you're here to make a difference, well, how are you going to do it? Same question I asked Jesse. How, do, how are we going to rectify it? How are we going to build the bridge and forge this unity of people when the crimes that's been done have not even been rectified? I think the best way to do it is exactly how you're doing it. It's, it's knowledge, right? It's, it's, it's making I gave you knowledge, Zach. What are you going to do with it now? Now, if you have the knowledge, if, if you understand what is happening, right? Mm -hmm. You can make the conscious decision to change your actions based on that knowledge. So, so did you know this before you became an American citizen or afterwards? I'm beforehand. I was nine beforehand. But, uh, you said nine? Nine. But I, I don't understand that. Nine, I like near. Yes. Okay. What would you gonna say, bro? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it's so problematic, right? So, uh, let me let me let me put it. Let me give you a synopsis, right? Your country got Islamicized, right? And Islamicized through the Islamization of your country, radicalization of violence and tribalism is on an uptake. It's a left your country war torn. In order to escape the problem that your people created for yourselves, you come to a place that white people committed the greatest atrocity in all of history in order to obtain, right? So you literally, instead of fixing your own problem, an internal problem, when we're talking about Somalia, we're talking about a homogenous country. We're talking about everybody there is the same. Even if there's different tribes, still the same people that are there. I just talked, heard a Somalian girl breaking down the ethnic homogeny of Somalia, which makes it a unique country in, on the earth, because most countries on the earth do not have ethnic homogeny anymore, right? So you, instead of fixing your own problem, you go, we don't have to do that. The white man has already made a place for everybody to start clean and they made it off of the genocide of the Native American and the enslavement of various tribes of West Africa which they've amalgamated and labeled black, right? That was the conscious effort so that every second of you being here is collaboration. There's no other way to interpret it. The only way you can stop collaborating is to go back to Somalia and begin to do the work to fix your people, right? That's, that's what he's saying, go ahead. Good, great, great, great point. You're gonna, you're gonna leave your own problem to come over here and try to fix mine. I, I mean, come on. What you're doing is, is you're, 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 you're giving us cop out answers to have to answer for your contribution to what's been going on here. Because you understand, you just said knowledge and all of the things, and you understand it's an uphill battle. You think it's just an easy thing to reverse what the so far? So why don't you take that energy and that effort to go and fix the place that you came from? That's the whole reason why my family is here. Because it's, it's difficult to... I think the most powerful thing in this world is money, right? Because it, it's what runs the world, right? And if you have less opportunities, less ways of making that money, getting that bread, then you can't help the people back there. Right? So, 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 okay, so I'm working with you. So the concept is, leave there, come somewhere where you can make some money so that you can take it back to help. Yes. So it's not about... <laughs> come on, Zach. <laughs> it's not about coming over here helping me and mine. It's about coming over here, utilizing the resources that 
mine, my kind, have provided for your people so that you can go actually go back and help your own. But, but some way you've twisted it and spent it in a way in which you can get me on my team, or get me on your team rather, convince me that we are on teams so that I can help you help your people before it even comes down to help them on. How can you do both? You said it's already such a difficult thing for you to even help yourself. Then when I said, yeah, even turning the circle white man, it's difficult. You think you just that powerful, huh, to do both? You can chew bubble gum walk at the same time, can't you, Zach? <laughs> Come on, Zach. Come on, Zach. You know that don't make a damn lick of sense. Nor has it ever been your intention or your mindset before you came up here talking to us today that your intention is to fix the things going on here in America. Because of what your ancestors and what your people that even brought you over here have instilled in you is that we build ourselves up in a way in a way in which we can benefit here to go back and help our people in Somalia. You want to know why I know this stuff? Because I grew up around Somalians. You go to San Diego, California. You go to San Diego, California, something called John Adams Apartments. They now known as Bayview. All of them. I ran that place. I ran that place. You know what I'm saying? I know the game. And that's why when Jesse brought you up, I already understood the difference that you guys separate between us and you guys. Now, we definitely get along, for sure. But the objective, right, the endeavor, is not us building together. We can, we, can, we can drink together, we can go to school together, we can party together, we can smoke together. Hell yeah, no problem. But my intentions, in, my intentions in your life and your intentions in life is for you to help yours, and then I'm left to just fend for my own. I'm not gonna How? What Somalian contribution have you guys made to black liberation? Ooh. Damn. Hey, the one thing I don't understand is uh, why is uh, why are you so against having two objectives? Because thing is, uh, I can't turn my back. I didn't say I'm. A, I didn't say. I didn't say I'm against having two objectives. I'm saying the reality of it. Come on, yeah, come obviously. on, Zach. You're not gonna sit up here and convince me that that is your objective. Now, would I believe that that's something that you'd like to do? Yeah, but it's but it's so far down on the on the list of things that you gotta do. Just because it's there, I'm not gonna give you credit for it. Talk is cheap. Talk is cheap, and I'm gonna tell you this, by the time you even get down to it on the list, guess what, we done already figured it out for ourselves, and that judgment we read about in Isaiah the 13th chapter is gonna be coming down. That's right. And I'm sorry, I am not gonna go against my God to help Zach. It is what it is. You you maneuver for your own, uh, for your best, you know, uh, um, for your best interest, and I'll move for mine. I just recognize that we're not the same just because our skin complexion might match, or might, might be close to each other. See, the world that we've been living in has exalted the, the complexion of so-called white or Caucasian skin that when somebody like Jesse sees you, based off of what he heard from us, he says, yeah, they got it before you. See, listen, you gotta come talk to them. He doesn't understand because he's inherited lies the same way you've inherited lies. I've inherited lies. But, but, but that God has ordained the truth for me. Right. That's right. God has ordained the truth for me. How is that different from my truth? <laughs> because my truth is about judgment coming upon you and me ruling over you. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That makes you ruling over you. How does that make you any different from the people that rule over you? Because we're not talking about ruling. We're talking about rape. We're talking about robbery. We're talking about murder. I have no intentions of raping your people. I have no intentions of robbing your people. Your people are going to forcibly bring your forces and your riches unto me. I'm not going to have to rob you for anything. But I am going to rule over you. It's not about rulership. It's about how you how you treat a man. It's about how you treat a man. Everybody always want to talk about a human being. It's about how inhumane these people are that you join yourself into. So when you, it, it's so funny if you say, well, what's the difference? We can go down a line of a lot of differences. I mean, I just did, I just named three of them. Do you have any objection to those? See, do you want me to just keep going just to sit up and appease you? I don't tap dance for you, Zach. Damn it. Oh, the white man coming, boy. Uh, 
somebody get that up. <laughs> Just step on All right? Uh, no, 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 no. You got anything else, Zach? No. Give me, uh, man, I just had something. I just had something. Oh, boy. Uh, eh, uh, eh. <laughs> Damn, why'd I just lose it? Get that back in Isaiah 14 again. Get that back in Isaiah 14 again. Isaiah 14, read verse 3 this time, all right? Go ahead. It's book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 3. Go. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give you rest from your sorrow and from your fear and from the hard bondage wherein you were made to serve. So this is the day in which we're looking for, the day in which we get rest, right? But the day that we get rest, it doesn't exonerate or it doesn't eliminate the work that needs to be done. So my day of rest is the day of your work and your servitude. So the things are just gonna be turned back to its rightful position where we are above and others are below. And we don't even have to have a conversation of whether or not you can get to me when you can of the list of philanthropist things that you wanna to get to in the world. It's not that we need it, we just recognize whose team people are on. And again, only reason why me and you have a conversation because of misunderstanding that Zach had, thinking that everybody with our skin complexion is the same. When me and you both know that that's not the case. Do you know what I mean? So with that, we give all honor, glory, and praise to the Most High God, Abba Nawiyah. How is his name? We do so in the name of his only begotten son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, real name Yahweh Shai, and we say, Kwame Shrub! Kwame Shrub! Before you call them friend, gotta prove them first Is there really loyalty when you're at your worst? We need to hear it raw like the wine You're looking for some truth, I'll supply If you want it too soft, this ain't thin You gon' choose a law of a sin These just some unkind gems These just some unkind gems We was diamonds in the dirt Just grinding in the turf Our mama go berserk, trying to keep from riding the hearse Now we